Hey there, and welcome to Explosive Enterprises. We get a lot of questions about the custom gear that we make, specifically how we come up with these ideas and how we actually make them. So we thought we'd try a slightly different style of video where we get into some of our homemade gear, specifically the concepts that inspired us, how we design them, and how we actually build them. Today we're going to take a look at the XE15 CAT, or Cheap Anti-Tank. For those of you that follow our Facebook page, you'll know that we posted the 3D print files for this thing on our Thingiverse page, and you can find those down in the description text below. This video is also going to serve as a build tutorial for this thing, so if that's what you're here for, you can feel free to skip to the end when we do that. Otherwise, let's take a look at some of the concepts that inspired us to build this thing. Conceptually, as an anti-tank guy, I really love the idea of light anti-tank weapons, like the M72 Law and RPG-26. The idea of being able to distribute anti-tank weapons throughout a squad, rather than being the only guy with any anti-armor capability, is, for pretty obvious reasons, very appealing. Now weirdly, in Airsoft, light anti-tank weapons are actually a boutique option. Not only are they fairly rare, seemingly only being made in small batches by small companies, they're also super expensive, and since they're not actually disposable like the real-life counterparts, are generally heavier and more overbuilt than the real thing. The closest option would be to buy a bunch of cheap standalone M203s and hand those out to your squadmates, which would be a little weird. So, as the name would imply, the idea with the CAT, or cheap anti-tank, is to have a single-shot anti-tank launcher that is cheap, mass-producible, with as few handmade parts as possible, and that ideally costs less than the 40mm grenades that are used to power it. With some average 3D printer filament, and even some pretty aggressively durable print settings, you can get this thing done for about 12 bucks, plus about 5 bucks for the PVC pipe, and let's say $2 for the bolts and screws. And since it's meant to be handed out to people that aren't going to be carrying around reloads for it anyway, the slightly slow reload speed theoretically shouldn't be too important. Plus, it's still a heck of a lot easier to reload than the existing airsoft laws. So that's kind of what inspired us to build it. Now let's take a look at the actual design that we came up with. So the design portion of this video is going to be pretty simple because, as you can see, this thing is not many parts and is pretty simple in how it actually functions. It's broken into two major functional halves. The front half, which has the front and rear sights and the breech, and then the rear half of the launcher, which has the completely aesthetic rear cap, the hammer, the safety pin, the hammer body, and the firing pin. Let's take a look at the front half first. So again, you have your front and rear sights. Mounted to the breech itself is the rear sight, and then the front sight is a standalone piece that's mounted to this big ring which will get epoxied around the outside of the barrel. The outer barrel slides over this inner piece of the breech here. If you were using the 1.5 inch barrel insert, it goes on the inside of this with this little thin part right here acting as a spacer between the 1.5 inch pipe and the inner diameter of the 2 inch piece of PVC pipe. The inside of the breech is what holds the 40 millimeter grenade. You can see this little lip right here would be where the rim of the 40 millimeter grenade rests. Other than that, you have the two parts where you're going to put your quarter 20 nut. Uh, two quarter 20 nuts, one on each side, and that will allow this launcher to be held together by those two bolts. Looking at the hammer body, this is where the hammer and the firing pin are. The hammer, when it's in its assembled configuration, is going to look something like this, and it's going to pivot around a screw that runs through this component of the launcher, and then through that hole on the actual hammer. That will pivot around and push on the firing pin, which will allow the firing pin to come forward, hit the quote-unquote primer on the grenade, and set it off. The safety pin is something that you're probably going to want to print in some slightly more flexible filament, since it is dependent on the flex of these two arms that will flex out around the outside of the hammer and then rest in these two slots, providing a little bit of friction for the thing when it's not in use. If you use a little stiffer filament like PLA, those two arms, since they will be flexing every time you pull this pin out, might fatigue and eventually break. I'm not really sure, I haven't actually printed it in PLA, uh, but I've had great luck printing it in ABS and PETG, so I would recommend printing it in those filaments. Or if you do print it with PLA, print it with maybe uh, thinner walls, just as a little bit more flex to it. Uh, you can see that there's also a little bit of a key slot in this hammer, or excuse me, in the safety pin here, that corresponds with a key slot that's on the hammer and that prevents this thing from sliding to the left and to the right when it's not in use. That makes this thing a straight pull out the back of the hammer. All that safety pin does is prevent the hammer from actually dropping into the hammer body. It's a little easier to see when it's assembled, but with this thing in, the hammer has no way of actually dropping into the body of the, of the launcher, and that prevents that firing pin from going forward and firing. So pretty simple and pretty effective. Next, you have the rear cap, and again, that's purely aesthetic. Uh, 
doesn't really have any function. You could put anything there or nothing if you didn't really feel like printing it. It's actually one of the more filament intensive pieces uh, just because it is so large. So again, purely aesthetic. If you don't want to print that, you don't have to. Next, you have the sling mounts and the sling slide. So those are all intended for one inch fabric strips or some kind of like backpack strap. Just needs to be one inch in diameter. You would slide it through and either tie it off, loop it around, or use these two sling slides to keep that in place. Given how this thing is going to be used, the sling is pretty important, so I would recommend adding one of those in. Finally, you have the thumb screw. And that's going to be what goes on to the 2 inch quarter 20 bolts that you have on the launcher that hold it together. Uh, you don't actually strictly need these, but basically, you can see there's a little hex on the back here, you would slide the bolt into this, the threads would stick out the other side there, uh, and it's a little bit easier to see in the build video, but these would be right around here. And all that allows you to do is disassemble the launcher by twisting the screws without actually having to have a socket wrench to do the bolts. So just a little bit of a quality of life thing. Not really strictly speaking necessary, but given how little filament it takes to print them, I would recommend it. So before we get into the build, I thought I'd pop over to the design workspace real quick, just so we can actually do an x-ray and see how this thing functions. When you push down on the hammer slash trigger here, that will push the firing pin forward into the back of the grenade, as I mentioned, and set it off. And that's pretty much entirely how this thing works. Not a lot to it. So with that said, let's move into the build. Here's what you're going to need for build materials. Starting it off, you're going to need two pieces of 2-inch ID Schedule 40 PVC pipe. The lengths of these are up to you, but in this build, I'm going to be using a 10-inch long piece and a 16-inch long piece. If you're using 2-inch or 50 millimeter rockets, such as Nerf Pocket Vortex rockets, the shorter of these two pieces will be acting as your barrel. If you're going to be using 1.5-inch or 40 millimeter rockets, such as Milsim Labs M29s, you're also going to need a length of 1.5-inch ID Schedule 40 pipe, and that's going to be need to be about an inch shorter than the short piece of 2-inch PVC pipe. In my case, that's going to be about 9 inches long. You're also going to need two 2-inch two long quarter 20 bolts, two quarter 20 nuts, one 1-inch one long 832 machine screw, and that's going to be acting as the pivot screw for the hammer. And you're going to need all the 3D printed parts from our Thingiverse page, which you can find in the description below. Note that you're going to need two of the sling mounts and two of the thumb screws. If you're going to be using the sling slides, which I'm not in this build, you are also going to need two of those. And finally, you're going to need a one inch wide strap to act as a sling. Length is up to you. I'm not actually going to be using one in this build, but like I said, any one inch strap should do the job. Uh, some notes on the 3D prints. I've printed all of my stuff here in PETG. All these parts should work fine with most filaments, though I would try to print it in whatever filament and settings you find to be most durable, since this thing is obviously going to be getting tossed around a little bit on the field. As I noted before, the safety pin is reliant on being a little bit flexible to work, so I would strongly recommend printing that in something with a bit of flex, like PETG or ABS. PLA might still work depending on your settings. Uh, you guys are going to know your printers a lot better than I do, so work with what you know. Just to make this whole thing easier to record, I'm going to do this build as a dry fit, so without gluing anything together. I generally use two part epoxies when gluing these parts together but I would go with whatever adhesives you're comfortable working with. Depending on the filaments you use, solvent welds like Weld On 3 would probably also work really well in this case. You can probably even get away with super glue for certain components. Of course, always make sure to wear proper PPE when you're cutting PVC pipe and working with chemicals. Let's start off with the front half of the launcher. Grab the outer barrel, the breech, and the inner barrel. Take that inner barrel and insert it into the coupling on the breech. The outer barrel will then just slide right over it and fit into the breech as well. Then, grab your front sling mount and position that over the barrel. After that, you can attach the front sight to the outer barrel. Make sure that the front sight and the breech are aligned so that your aiming point is going to be correct. Alright, on to the rear half of the launcher. We're going to start off by assembling the hammer body. So grab that 832 machine screw and your hammer body. You can see the hole that the screw is meant to go into. That should be a small enough hole for the screw to self-tap, so just screw it in a bit to start and it should stay in place. Looking at the hammer, you can see the hole that the screw is meant to go through and where it would sit in the hammer body. Actually, before we go and mount the hammer, we need to install the firing pin. This can be a little bit fiddly, so you might want to grab a screwdriver or a small flat tool to help you out. Point the narrow end of the firing pin down and wiggle it into the firing pin channel and out the front face of the hammer body. Yeah, a little easier said than done. Two hours later. Here we go. Once you fiddle that into position, you can see how it sticks out the front. And that's basically what it's going to look like when it's fired. Alright, now let's install the hammer. 
line the hammer up with that screw and start tightening with your fingers if you're a moron like me. Or you can go get a screwdriver and do this the right way. And then grab the wrong screwdriver. Screw the 832 machine screw in with whatever tool seems to fit correctly. With that tightened down, you can see how pressing the hammer forces the firing pin forward. If the hammer ever does get stuck in the fire position, you can press on the front of the firing pin and that will pop the hammer back into position. Now let's make sure the safety pin works. If the safety pin was printed correctly, it should slot directly into the back of the hammer and click right in. If it feels like the force required to remove it is a little light, you can increase the resistance by upping the wall thickness on the print or adding a couple layers of paint. Next, we attach the rear tube. And then onto that, the rear sling mount. And to finish the rear tube off, you pop the rear cap on. Next, let's take a look at the hardware. To start, you're going to need to set the quarter 20 nuts into the tabs on the breech. This can easily be done with a breech glue to the barrel, but I'm going to remove it here just to make it easier to show. The quarter 20 nuts both seat into the hex shaped slots on the tabs sticking out on the side of the breech. Using a tool, press them all the way into position. Next, we need to put the thumb screws onto the bolts. I'd recommend using a dab of glue to keep these on, but you don't really need to do that. And that's it, we can actually assemble this thing for firing. Line up the two tabs and run the bolts through, threading them onto the nut on the opposite side. And these can just be finger tight, no need to use tools. Now that we've got this thing fully assembled, let's take a look at what needs to be glued together. For starters, you need to glue the hammer body to the rear tube. You then need to glue the sling mount to the rear tube, the rear tube to the rear cap, the breech to the outer barrel, the sling mount to the outer barrel, and the front side to the outer barrel. And finally, if you're gonna be using the inner barrel, you need to glue that into the coupler that is on the breech. And that's it for the build. All you need is a coat of paint and you're ready to go. If you're curious what we used for paint, all the PVC is painted with Krylon Camo Dark Green, and then everything, including the 3D printed parts, has been hit with Tester's Dull Coat for protection and that nice matte finish. And finally, it's always a good idea to hit PVC with some clear primer before painting, just to help the paint stick. Before we finish up, here's a quick loading demo. First thing you're gonna do is load in your projectile. If you're using 1.5 inch projectiles, you can load them in through the breech. If you're using two inch projectiles, you're going to need to load those in through the front of the barrel, muzzle loader style. Next thing you're gonna do is load your 40 millimeter grenade. It's worth noting that the longer the 40 millimeter grenade is, the shorter the effective barrel length of the launcher is going to be. I've had great luck with these Avengers grenades since they can be filled with CO2 and can be fired without the head attached. Without the head attached, they're quite short so they can still retain quite a lot of power. With the 40 millimeter round inserted, make sure the firing pin is reset and that the safety pin is on. If the firing pin is stuck out, you might accidentally fire the launcher when you put it together. Slot the launcher together and insert the bolts into the tabs and screw them down. After that, all you need to do is pull the pin, aim, squeeze the trigger, and fire. We hope you all found that informative or at least vaguely interesting. Let us know what you think of this style of video. We have plenty more projects to discuss and hopefully more to release on Thingiverse as well. So if you have any comments on the designs or on the videos, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.